Hi everybody! Welcome to the second uh, video on the Jitter Curse. In the last lesson, we saw that we can read the movie using the JIT movie object. We also saw that we had to attach a Q Metro object because to emit new frames the JIT movie needs a bang and the Q Metro object gives us when activated, for example with a toggle, so sending it the number one, it gives us um, a stream of bangs and all those bangs are separated by one from the other uh, by 33 milliseconds in time. So why 33 milliseconds? This we saw this was the result of 1000 divided by 30, so our desired frame rate, frame rate and this gives us 33.33. .33. Now if we put a movie inside uh, from the max library here, we can uh, look at this movie with a GTP window object. And if we don't want to hear the audio, we can set the volume to zero with the volume zero attribute. In the last video, we also saw what an attribute is. Now, we said that everything that comes out from JIT objects, so not GL objects, but simple JIT objects, is a JIT matrix. So, what is a JIT matrix? Well, a JIT matrix is a multi-dimensional container which Max, uh, specifically Jitter, uses to store images. It can store also some other type of data, but for now we will see how a JIT matrix is used to store images. So, let's create the object called JIT matrix. Now, this object takes a bunch of arguments. The first argument, which is optional, is the name. So, for example, I can give a name to this matrix and call it my matrix. Then it takes a number of planes, which we can see as the number of channels that form the colors in an image. So, in case of an image or a frame of a video, we are talking about four planes, which means four channels, alpha, red, green and blue. We will go back to this uh, very soon. Then it takes a data type, which is how the values of the pixels of the image are represented. And this can be uh, several different data types. For the moment we choose char. We will see in a moment what char means. And then we set the dimensions of this matrix, which means uh, how many pixels will be contained in this matrix. For example, we can say 320 on the x axis, and 240 on the Y axis. This means that we will have an image with 320 pixels on the X axis and 240 on the Y axis. And we have two numbers because these are two dimensions, X and Y, since an image is uh, always two dimensional. Okay, so if you attach the JIT matrix object in between the JIT uh, movie and the JP window object, we see that uh, nothing happens. What we can do, for example, is to reduce the dimensions of this matrix and in this way we have a pixelated movie because we are reducing the number of pixels that are contained in the matrix, so in the image that we are going to see. So in this case we will have on the x uh, dimension 32 pixels and on the y dimension we will have uh, 24. So the total number of pixels in this image will be 32 uh, multiplied by 24, which is 768. Okay, so let's go back to the JIT matrix object. We say that the first argument is the name of the matrix. We can uh, give a name to the matrix for purposes that we will see later. Then we can give it a number of planes. So, as we said, every plane represents some data stored inside a single pixel. So, this number 4, it means that in a single pixel of this video, we can store up to 4 different data. And in case of an image, this will be the alpha channel, the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel. So, basically, it means that every pixel of this image, so every little square, let's make this even more apparent by uh, reducing the dimensions. So every one of these squares contains actually four different numbers in order to create this color and the transparency. So the alpha it's what gives us the transparency. At the moment it's not used because we have only one video and we are not using alpha in any way whatsoever. Then we have the red which gives us the uh, red intensity. 
Then we have the green, which will give us the, re the green intensity and so on. So to store a color in a cheat matrix, we need at least three planes, red, green and blue. The alpha is kind of optional, but Max by default puts it um, as the first channel. We're talking about images. Jitter puts the first channel as the alpha channel and puts it automatically to the maximum value. Now, this brings us to the second argument, char, which is the data type. So, in a JIT matrix, we have different data types to represent the values inside the pixels, or as they are called, also cells of a matrix. So, every one of these squares is called a cell of the matrix. So, we have different data types. The first data type that we have, and that Max uses by default to represent uh, uh, to represent an image is char, which means that the numbers, so the value of the pixel, will be represented with integer numbers that go from 0 to 255. So 256 shades uh, for each channel. Then we have float 32. Actually, let's write this in non-capital letter. Then we have float 32, which gives us... Uh, uh, numbers in the range 0 to 1, but with a comma. So we can generate as many numbers as 2 to the power of 32, which is a crazy big number. So this means that we will have a much greater precision when working with Flow32, but the range now is from 0 to 1. Then we have the type long, which is a much bigger integer value. Now this depends also from computer to computer which, uh, which number can be uh, stored inside the long, but uh, let's, say, let's just say there is a big integer number. And then we have float64, which is an even bigger, uh, even, always 0 to 1, but with even bigger precision than float32. So when you need absolute precision, you will want to use the float64 data type. Now, as you saw here, we store, we put the, the data type char inside this JIT matrix. Now, char is the data type that uh, that Jitter uses by default to store uh, images inside the matrix, as we said before. We can also see that by using, again, the JIT FPS GUI object, which doesn't only give us the, the FPS, but it also gives us the type and it gives us also the dimension of this matrix. So we can already know the dimensions of the matrix that comes out from every uh, jitter object, uh, the type, and also how many planes it has. So as we saw, as we said here, there are four planes which are for alpha, red, green, and blue. There is also another object that gives us, um, that gives us information about the matrix, and this object is called the JIT dot matrix info object. So if we connect this here and then we print what comes out of here, we can see that come basically three messages, type, dimension and plane count. So we can use the root object to root those guys out, those information out. So the first will be plane count, the second will be type and the third will be dimension. So we can see here the plane count, which is for the type, which is by default char, as we said, and the dimensions that are the dimensions of the video, of the frames that we are reading in the video. So we could say the resolution of the video. So making a little recap, we have four is the number of planes, which is how many datas are contained inside every single pixel of this matrix. Then we have char, which is the data type, which means in which way are those numbers represented. And then we have the dimensions of the matrix. Uh, for this video are 320 by 240, but we can also adjust them using a JIT matrix object and setting the dimensions that we want. Now there is a very useful object to inspect the content of a matrix. This object is called JIT.CellBlock. is a big grid as you can see. If we connect it here, for example, to the output of the GTP window, you can see that, let's actually go back to the previous dimensions uh, here. So these numbers here make sense. So you can see that by default, it gives us a big grid full of 
uh, the number 255. Now, why is that? So, as we saw, the first channel is the alpha channel, which is the transparency. Now, Max, by default, gives to the, to the first channel, to the transparency channel, the maximum value possible, which is 255 in the char data type. Now, if we want to expect the other channels, like the red, the green, and the blue, we can send a message to the JIT cell block object to show us the plane that we want. Now, the plane, the planes in Max start to be indexed from zero. So, the transparency will be the plane zero. The red will be the plane one. The green will be the plane two. And the blue will be the plane 3. So they start to be indexed from 0. So the plane 0 will be the alpha. The plane 1 will be the red. Plane 2, um, plane two will be the green. Plane 3 will be the blue. So let's actually make a little agenda here. This is the alpha. This is the red. This is the green. And this is the blue. Now if we connect those messages to the JIT cell block object. Oh, by the way, let me write out this is called this called JIT dot cell block. Sorry for forgetting about this. So if we visualize the plane zero, uh, as we say, this is the alpha channel by default is set to the maximum value. Then if we expect the red plane, we can see that the numbers start to uh, change. For every frame, we will have different numbers almost everywhere in the video. So these are the single pixels of the video. We can inspect them singularly. So this is the red channel. So this will be the green channel of the video. And this will be the blue channel. So this is pretty useful to inspect directly which kind of... Uh, uh, which kind of value is in every single pixel if you if you need to do that now let's try for example to change the data type of this matrix and set instead the, instead of setting it to char let's set it to float 32 now as you can see the wall range has been adjusted to fit the new uh, minimum and maximum values so in the plane in the plane zero we have that every value, every, every value is set to 1, which is the maximum value for the float 32 data type. Then we have that in the second plane, which is the plane 1, uh, we have the red values uh, uh, adjusted consequently, and so on for the other planes. Okay, now let's go back to the char data type. One interesting thing that we can do is to visualize the single planes of this matrix individually in some uh, GTP windows. So, for that we have to create the object JIT Unpack. Now, as you see, the JIT Unpack, when I create it, has one input and five outputs. Now, the last output, like in a lot of other jitter objects, is the dump out output, which we will use only when we want to retrieve some information about this object, but usually it's not used. So, the first four outputs are the one that we are interested in, because they give us, uh, each of those outputs give us a different plane from this matrix. So, if I attach here the output of GTP window, and then I create some other GTP windows, to visualize the output, we will see that the first one is completely white. That's because, the, as we say, as we said, the first plane is the alpha value, which is by default set to the maximum value. Then let's try with the second output, which is the red channel, and we are now looking at the value of all the red in this video. So this is the red channel. Then we can take a look at the green channel. And we can take a look at the blue channel. Let me move this down here. This will be the blue channel. So let's take again those little uh, legenda here. So green, alpha, red, green, and blue. Let's actually put them below. Okay. 
So now you're maybe asking yourself, why is this not red, why is this not green, why is this not blue? Well, the reason is that the GTP window, when it receives uh, only one plane, because these matrices have only one plane, we can also see that by using the GTFPS GUI object. So for example, if we attach this here, we can see that this matrix has only one plane. So it's not anymore four planes like the original one, but has only one plane. And GTP window, when it receives a... Uh, when it receives a one plane matrix, will also be a single uh, plane matrix, which has no notion about colors, because not having uh, several channels, so there is just one channel. So it just knows that there is one channel and it uses it as a, a grayscale uh, value. So it basically one channel can never be represented as a single as a color because we don't know if we are talking about the red, green, or the blue color, so it can just be represented as a grayscale. Okay, so as you can see in this one, uh, we have, for example, that the shirt of the guy is a bit brighter than in the other channels, and that's because the shirt is red. So when the shirt is red, of course, we have more amplitude in the red channel. And the same can be said for the uh, trousers in the green channel. And uh, and there is really not much blue in this image. But as you can see, the background, for example, the this, this kind of wall that is behind the guy, is in all three videos kind of the same value. And that's because uh, it's white, or it's kind of gray. And gray is just the sum of uh, all the three colors, red, green, and blue, at the same value. So this is why... Uh, the world behind has the same value in every different channel. So to make this really clear, let's make a, a last recap. So let's create a new JIT matrix from scratch. And let's give it the arguments that we talked about. So the first argument is the name. And let's call this with the name so mat2, for example. Then let's give it a number of planes, for example, uh, Four, but this number could also be three or two, or could also be actually 25. So there is really the maximum amount of planes that we can put in a matrix is 32. So it can have as much as 32 values for every single pixel. So every one of the square of the matrix can contain up to 32 values. This is not useful clearly when talking about videos, but it can be done for other purposes. So for the moment, let's just talk about four. Uh, four or less planes. Then we give it the data type, for example, float 32, and then we give it some dimensions, like 10 and 10. Uh, for example, we could create a matrix with three planes and not, use it, not using it for uh, storing video data or image, image content, but we could use it for storing three-dimensional coordinates. We will do that when working with OpenGL. So let's keep in mind that this, uh, the matrix container is actually a, a very flexible container, can be used to store uh, image data, but can also be used for storing every other different kind of data. It's always anyway numbers, and it only depends how we are going to use those numbers. So uh, for this video, I want to stop here. And uh, in the next video, we will see uh, some more stuff that we can do with JIT Matrix. And I would like to mention that I have a Patreon page, which means you can support me and get uh, a lot of uh, premium content from my Patreon page by supporting me with a small monthly pledge. So I will leave the link in the description. So once again, thank you for following. Uh, see you all in the next video. Ciao.